Hey, this is Andrew Brown. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Application Composer. So this service used to be called a service called Stackery. It moved over, it was acquired by AWS. It was only doing serverless stuff. It wasn't so great last year, but I think they have greatly improved it since last year. Um, and it now shows up under CloudFormation. And so the idea with this is it is a visual designer allowing you to quickly uh, create things. So uh, we could drag out components here, right? Um, and then it will reflect here, the changes here. Or the other thing that we could do is if we already have an existing template, which I do, we can go here and maybe we have one for like ELB. So I'll go down to ELB here and I will just go in and grab this template and go to raw code. And I'll just grab this whole template here and paste it in. And if I go to canvas, you can see it's all visualized, right? So that's pretty impressive. Uh, but let's go ahead and just undo this for a second. And let's say I wanna bring it into a DC2 instance. I just wanna show you at a more granular level. We'll just type uh, maybe instance here. The search here isn't the best. And what I'm looking for is EC2 instance. And I want to zoom in. And I'm gonna go into details here. And so imagine we want to configure this. If I go over to here, we might want to add in an instance type. And then we'll say uh, T3 micro. And we'll go back over to here. And if we click into this and go to details, we can now see those settings here. All right, so pretty straightforward. Uh, they used to have like options in here for you to uh, change stuff, but now they've, I guess, greatly simplified this. Um, but I guess another thing we could do with this is maybe like, I'm just trying to think of something that would connect to an EC2 instance, maybe like Route 53. So maybe there's like a route for that. So I'm just looking for Route 53 here. Route 53, does that show up here? And I might want to have a record set and It'd be nice if I could get that record set to point to it. So I'm just gonna type in record set. I'll, I'll use um, ChatGPT for this. I'll just say CloudFormation for a record set that points to an EC2 instance, a Route 53 record set. And so we'll see what we get here. But I could see uh, people utilizing this in their workflow. Um, it's not really that useful because when you think about it, it's not like you can go in here and just start setting things. You really have to, like all this really is doing is giving you a visualizer. But we'll just take a moment here and see what happens once we get that record set. So yeah, we got our hosted zone, that's fine. And so I just want to copy this and we'll go back over to our template here. And we'll go ahead and paste this in, my record set. Um, and I don't really care about the hosted zone. We'll just pretend that our hosted zone exists here. But what I want to do is grab the instance and paste that in here. And we'll take this one out. I'm not exactly sure why it has a problem with this. All mappings must start with uh, at the same column. So I think it's just a spacing issue. I'm gonna go back to Canvas. And so it does establish a connection there. So even if there aren't dots sometimes associated with it, once you start having that relationship, uh, that works really well, okay? I might have more complex uh, use cases if we go back over to GitHub here, because we did the bootcamp in 2023. So I'm gonna go over to the Credder bootcamp here. And we're gonna go into the last week, like week 10X, or sorry, uh, week X is the last week. And in here, we should have some pretty complex uh, CloudFormation templates. I guess they're all broken up, so maybe they don't look as complex as they could be. But let's say I go into our networking one. I grab this one. I wonder what we would get. Again, just playing around, seeing if I can break it. And go over to here. And it shows all the stuff that it creates. Okay, cool. Um, group this. Not exactly sure what groups do. Maybe it allows us to have multiple templates in here. So could I add another group? Mm, create a template, nope. So that is interesting. There's other things that you can do with this. I know like there is the IDE tool. Uh, you uh, can sync this to a repo. So the way it used to work was that you would have, it, uh, have a, a repo and it would push the changes there once you're happy with them, but you could um, have these changes reflect 
based on your local developer environment. Um, personally, I don't really care about doing that right now. Um, and it is nice that they have all the components in here. The only thing I would say is that what I don't like about this is that it took away a lot of the conveniences. So the idea of this was that you didn't have to know coding whatsoever to work with App Composer. And now App Composer is just a visualizer. It doesn't give you any conveniences of the old Stackery system. So is it good? I don't know, but it is nice to have a visualizer. Um, how is this any different than the old visualization tool? I guess it's basically the same thing. Because before, when you used to launch a, a stack, you could um, have a visualizer here, and that's what it looks like they did. They just replaced the visualization tool with this tool, okay? But yeah, there you go. That is Application Composer.